Happy New Year, everyone. It's so good to be in his house this morning. And for those who are with us in person, those who are joining us online, we say thank you for being a part of the services today. It has been a few weeks since we have been together. For many of you who already know, uh, Jenny and I and our household, uh, COVID came to visit, and uh, we, we dealt with all of that. And uh, the doctors, as we said last Thursday in our prayer video, uh, they gave us a clearance the Monday before Christmas and myself on Christmas Day. And our girls, they cleaned up this week and uh, were able to be back in person. I went back to the doctor on this past Monday just to make sure everything was good. And he gave me the thumbs up and he said, go back to work. That was his words. Go back to work. So uh, we're back to work, and through this season of time, we've been praying. We mentioned this in the first service. We've been praying for the Anderson family. We've been praying for the Meyer family. We've been praying for my brother, who went on a vent on Thursday. Uh, he has pneumonia and COVID and uh, still fighting this battle. Uh, so I'm praying for him uh, this morning and his family, who all came down with it. Uh, we've been praying for a family. Uh, the, the Summers family in Texas, who his wife Sandy is also in the hospital. Uh, we know what it feels like. We know what it is to have walked through this uh, situation. And we just put those people in our prayers and trust them that God is going to continue to heal and bring victory to each and every one of their lives. And we've been praying for you uh, over this break and uh, as we've been online only. But it's so good to be back in the house of God this morning. And just to be in person, it's been a while for us, and we just want to say thanks to all of our pastors and those individuals who have kept the church moving forward, whether it be in person, uh, from the Christmas production, for those who were here uh, three weeks ago, Pastor Aaron and Cassidy, who, who led the charge there, and Pastor Ty and, and Pastor David, as well as our guest speaker, uh, um, uh, Stockdale, Jim Stockdale, thank you, who spoke last Sunday online. We're so appreciative of these folks who continue to invest in us and continue to make sure that the gospel goes forward. Amen? Amen. But it's good to see you. Welcome today. We're going to be in Luke chapter number 19 today. So if you have your Bibles, I want to encourage you to turn there. We're going to be starting at verse number one. It says this, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And there was a man called by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and he was rich. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was. And he was unable due to the crowd because he was short in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up a sycamore tree in order to see him because he was about to pass through that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down for today I must stay at your house. And he turned and came down and received him joyfully. When the people saw this, they all began to complain, saying, He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. But Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I am giving to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I am giving back four times as much. And Jesus said, Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Will you pray with me, Father? Over these next few moments, I pray that we hear what the Spirit is wanting to say to the church. And I ask God that you would open up our hearts, Lord, that we may respond to the very word that you are speaking to us. And Lord, let us act this morning. Let us not leave the same way that we came in. But Lord, let, we, let us set our eyes upon you today for the purpose of change. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. You know, as the new year approached a few days ago, like many of you, <clears throat> it was easy for us to look back over the year. It's hard to imagine that a year ago, as we entered 2020, and really it was a new decade when you think about it, that we were entering that year with much hope and with a lot of anticipation. 
We were excited about what the new year would bring. It was a new beginning, if you will. The old had passed and the new had come. And with that opportunity that came with it, we were letting go of what was for the sake of what could be. So as we armed ourselves with goals, as we set plans and made plans, as some of us even made resolutions last year entering into 2020, we were all expectant for a great year. We wanted that. We never dreamed that only 12 weeks into the new year we each would face this invisible threat that would impact so many, so many lives. We went from expectancy to tragedy and loss, a loss of schedule. Many of us understand virtual is very much a part of our lives. Virtual is very much a part of who we are now as a society. Many of you left the office and now are working at home full time, never to return to a brick and mortar again. But you're at home, online, doing your job. We've had these losses of schedule, a loss of jobs, a loss of income, a loss of loved ones. Whether you have been directly impacted by that or whether you know someone who has been impacted, we understand the loss and for some, a loss of hope. We've all been forced in some way in this past year to change. Well, today we find ourselves facing a new year, 2021, and a new year beginning a little more fragile, a new year filled with a little more trepidation than the last one. We're a little more cautious. I saw on one of my friend's Facebook post on New Year's Eve. He said, nobody claimed 2021 as your year. He said, we're all going to walk in real slow. We're going to be good. We're going to be quiet. And we're not going to touch anything. <laughs> Anybody relate to that? We, we've been there. We understand it. Well, the new year has always been about a restart. It's always been about a new beginning, if you will. And it is. It's about turning the page and choosing to look forward instead of looking behind. And at the same time, when we think about that, I'm a realist. I'm a realist in the sense of I can't help but see the tangible that is around us. And many of you see the same. While we anticipate, while we desire this new beginning, we've still experienced loss in our lives. We're, we're still putting a mask in our pockets. We still have them in case we need them or in case we get a little closer, in case, in case our encounters uh, start collapsing in on us or we're putting them in our purse every day that we leave our house. We're still anxious about a vaccine. We're still wondering when things will be better. You know, when I woke up on Friday morning, my thirsty light was still very much present. The same demands call for my attention. The problems that I had at 11.59 p.m. on New Year's Eve still demanded a solution at 12 a.m. on New Year's Day. All of that was still coming forward just because there was a countdown, just because we watched uh Dick Clark's rocking New Year's Eve, whatever it is you tuned into on that evening, whatever you saw, a countdown doesn't magically make the circumstances change and neither does the arrival of a new year. Yet in the middle of it all, in the midst of the loss, in the midst of the concern, maybe in the midst of fear, even though we see the tangible and know what's expected of us, there's part of us that not only probably celebrated on New Year's Eve with confetti and horns, maybe you took a celebratory kiss from your spouse. I, I don't know how you celebrated. There's a part of us that holds out and looks for the new beginning as this calendar year rolls over yet once again. And we ask ourselves that question in the midst of the tangible, in the midst of the things that we are seeing come into this new year with us, how is that possible? When we want the new beginning, 
when we want something fresh, when we want something different than what we had last year, how is that possible? From our text, Jesus entered Jericho. And with him were his disciples. We could say that it was his entourage, the people that traveled with him wherever he went. And not only the twelve, but there were others who followed as well. There were people who came from great distances that just wanted to be where he was. So when he showed up into town on that particular day, his fame was spreading throughout Jericho. It only took a few people to actually see him and recognize him and his disciples in the town. That there were rumors that began to circulate in the city that Jesus is in Jericho. He's here. You see, there was no TV that shared his picture. Nobody really knew what he looked like if they hadn't seen him or been in a crusade with him somewhere. Your phone didn't get a notification that, that, that pinged and said that he was in your location. You need to come out and check out Jesus, the evangelist. No, those things didn't exist. The news of Jesus spread by word of mouth. They heard of his miracles, perhaps intrigued by the boldness of his teaching and the things that they had heard about him. And the crowds began to make their way out of their houses and out of their businesses and into the streets. And they began to, 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 to begin to find him and follow him along. They wanted to simply catch a glimpse of Jesus. This was Jericho's opportunity. To see him. This was Jericho's opportunity to witness, maybe, or hear, or engage a miracle. So they came, a crowd of people filling the streets. In Luke's gospel, he recorded the story of one particular man who was part of the crowd. And I really find this interesting because how many people were there? How many people lived in Jericho? A few years ago, maybe two, I don't know exactly how many, but the NFL draft came uh, to Nashville, Tennessee. And if you were in downtown, I'm sorry, because Broadway had thousands upon thousands of people lining the streets. It was shoulder to shoulder, people trying to get around and down 2nd Avenue. It was almost impossible. People from other states, people who lived in Nashville and the surrounding areas, emerged on Nashville to be a part of the NFL draft. Thousands of individuals. And when I think about that moment, when I witness that on TV, because we do have TV, we can actually see it without being there, I begin to think about this particular story. Because that is the, what was happening in this moment. There were people everywhere. There were people coming out to see this person named Jesus and there was one man in the crowd. He was one in many, but Luke grabbed him and chose to focus on him in Scripture. A man who simply wanted to see Jesus, like so many others. You see, while many were trying to look over one another as Jesus passed, possibly pushing past their fellow neighbors to, to get a closer look, this man in our story, this man by the name of Zacchaeus, had a different approach. Now Zacchaeus was small in stature. The scripture tells us that. I don't know what constituted being small is. We could say that he was short. Was he five foot four or five foot two or was he four foot six? I don't know. I just know that the crowd was very much there. He was short in stature. So he couldn't see over them. Now you think the crowd has to be thick because he could just step to one side. He could not see around those who were in front of him. He couldn't see over them. So he began to do something a little different. He made a plan. Much like what we do on New Year's Eve. We make plans. We make resolutions. We make all kinds of effort to plan out our New Year. Well, Zacchaeus made a plan. And his plan was this. He knew the street that Jesus was on. 
It was his hometown. He knew the mass of crowds that were there. He knew the way that he was headed. And I'm sure that he remembered down the road from where Jesus was currently, there was a tree, a sycamore tree to be exact. So in the scripture says that Zacchaeus ran on ahead and he began to climb the tree. He began to get up real high so that he was above the crowd so that when Jesus came walking by, he could see and get a picture, an image, a visual of who this man is. He wanted to see him. But there was something that happened that day that he could never comprehend, that he could never uh, uh, know that it was going to happen. Jesus, as he was walking by, and as Zacchaeus was perched in the tree, Jesus stopped. He stopped, and he looked up into the tree, and he called Zacchaeus' name, and he said, Zacchaeus, come down, because today I'm going home with you. Oh, amazed, overwhelmed because of this invitation, the scripture says he hurried down the tree and he received Jesus joyfully. He was excited about that moment that he got to spend with this Jesus that he had heard so much about. All oh, the many people, the mass of people, the thousands upon thousands that had come out of their homes and businesses to see this one man, to see this one man by the name of Jesus. It was Zacchaeus who chose to climb a tree to see him who got that audience with him on that day. For those who are hunters in the room this morning, on some level, you should be able to relate to that decision that Zacchaeus made. You know, when I go hunting, there's an advantage of being in a tree compared to being on the ground. Because when you're in the tree, you're able to see everything that is passing through the woods, be it a squirrel <laughs> or anything else that may be there. A flock of turkey. You can see them better in the tree, in the stand, than you can on the ground. I've hunted in both places. When I'm on the ground, I'm constantly looking around things. I'm constantly seeing the obstacles that are in front of me. But when I'm up in the tree, I'm able to see a little more clearly those things that are passing through. I believe that maybe Zacchaeus might have been a hunter because he made the decisions. He made the decisions to get above the obstacles. He made a decision to climb that tree to get above his circumstances and his distractions so as to focus on, his, on, on who he truly wanted to see, which was Jesus. You know, like every year, we all seek a new beginning. We all hope for something better, a, cho a closure of what, we, what was or what can be in our lives. But like every new year, if we're honest, we still have responsibilities to our current season. There are chapters that we find ourselves still writing. There are chapters that we still have not completed in our lives. And many of us, we want to complete that chapter. We want to put an exclamation point at the end of it so that we can close that chapter and open up a new chapter, one with a blank page, one that we can begin to write something new about our lives. And that's really, when we think about it, what the new year feels like. But yet, the realist in me says that all of us are still trying to end one chapter but yet hoping to start another. We want to see that happen. As I look at this story, as I look at the life of Zacchaeus, I see the arrival of Jesus into the city of Jericho as the coming of a new year. The anticipation of something that is greater coming our way. Was Jesus not great? Was Jesus not famous? Was Jesus not the man he was. His fame goes before him everywhere he went. 
And it was Zacchaeus who saw something or heard something where he wanted to see him. So he made his way up the tree. There was something greater that was coming. So Zacchaeus wanted to see this great light that was entering the city. He wanted to see this greater. He wanted to see with his own eyes what he'd only heard about through word of mouth. So he made a decision to do something that he normally wouldn't do. He climbed a tree. This rich man who was probably in nice clothes and nice shoes and everything about him, he resorted back to childhood days and he climbed a tree. He chose to get above what was immediately around him so as to see the one he heard so much about. I ask you, as you said in this room today, how many need to get above the obstacles? How many of you need to get above the noise? How many of you need to get above the doubts or maybe the conflict that is going on in your life today? How many are trying to close out 2020 and walk into 2021 fresh and new, but yet you're still writing a chapter that's still being written? How do we do that? How do we successfully move into a new beginning? How many of us in this room need to climb like Zacchaeus climbed a tree for the purpose of seeing him, making Jesus the priority of your life in this moment? As we launch into a new year. You see as an observation of this story. I don't know if you've ever caught this or not. Maybe you've read this story a million times. But as an observation. When I read this story. The same Zacchaeus that climbed the tree. Is the same Zacchaeus that came down the tree. Did you know that? Wasn't somebody different. The same Zacchaeus that went up the tree. Is the same Zacchaeus that came down down the tree when Jesus called his name, meaning he was still the same thief. He was still the same sinner when he came down the tree. He still had the tangible, the tangible to deal with, those things that hold on to our lives. The sickness that we had in 2020 follows us sometimes into 2021. The problems that we have with family are still problems with our family in 2021. Whatever it is that is going on in your life, we would like to just to cut that off, but we can't, and you know that. How do we start a new journey? How do we start a new beginning? He came down the tree the same as he went up. He still had to address what was going on around him and in him, but there was a new component added to the equation at that moment in his life. When he chose to climb the tree, that's when he made Jesus a priority. How many are you in the room as you're pressing into 2021 and you feel like there are some kind of, of ropes or some kind of tether holding you back from moving forward like you want to? Maybe it's just life. It's just the things that you're still worried about things that you're still concerned about, things that you're still dwelling, the problems that we have. I still have rent due on in January just as much as I did in December. Come on. It's still coming. As we're pressing into this new year, if you will, what are we looking at? What is our priority? What I like about Zacchaeus, that even in the midst of all of the tangible, even in the midst of everything that circled around him, he chose on that day to make Jesus a priority. But not being like the rest of the crowd that just said, oh, I thought you were gone. But he chose to climb a tree. He chose to get up high where there were no obstacles, where there were no things that were keeping him from seeing this man named Jesus. You see, the encounter led to a new beginning for Zacchaeus. As they were walking away from the tree to his house, once again, the same guy. And as the people grumbled about him and asking why him, the tangible, he's a thief. He took money from them. 
Why is Jesus hanging out with that guy? He's a sinner. Why would he even care about him? And so they were walking away from the tree, and he's excited about the moment that he gets to spend with Jesus, this person he's only heard about. As he was walking away, even with the tangible, the Bible says, Zacchaeus stopped. Now think about that for a second. Instead of making this beeline to Zacchaeus' house, probably the nicest one in the neighborhood, he was rich. He stopped. He stopped. You know, there's some, if not all of us, who need to make a hard stop this morning. Because in the middle of all that is going on around us, what truly has the ability to change us, to change who we are and how we deal with the world, is Jesus. But yet, we continue from 2020 into 21, still looking at the same old problems, still dealing with the same old stuff. Still hanging out with the same old friends that don't bring you up, but tear you down. Still walking the same path. Still doing the same thing. You know what the definition of insanity is? I think you've already heard it. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. That's insanity. Zacchaeus came to a place in the midst of all the tangible. But on this day, he wanted to see Jesus. And he made him a priority on this day. See, Zacchaeus' encounter with Jesus is so impactful that something happened in those first few moments which caused Zacchaeus to change the very course of his life. It didn't take a year of discipleship classes. It just took a moment. What takes us a year sometimes, Jesus can do in a minute. Come on. He can do in a second, in a moment of time. He can change the very nature of who we are. He stopped in his tracks because he realized something about this man was calling him to come up instead of live down. And he looked at Jesus in this moment and he said, Lord, Half of my possessions I'm giving to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I'm giving back four times as much. Boy, you know there's a change that's happening when you start getting in the pocketbook and the wallet. Come on. When this man who lived his life for himself and was very selfish, and then all of a sudden the encounter with Jesus caused him to focus on others, when it began to cause him to see someone else instead of himself, there was a change that came to that man in that moment, all because he had the opportunity to look Jesus into the eyes and to see his great love that we've been singing about this morning. Yes, yes. Can you see him? Can you see him? It was in that moment that Jesus made this statement today, salvation has come to you. It was that day that he found repentance because repentance is a change of mind. And that's what Zacchaeus came to. He came to a place of changing his mind about what he was doing and about the life that he was living. And he chose to do something about it. He repented. And salvation came to his house. You see, Jesus didn't come to Jericho to only be seen. It wasn't about necessarily his fame, even though he was famous. It wasn't about his entourage that followed him everywhere he went. Jesus declared in verse 10, For the Son of Man has come. He has come. He has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's what he came to do. He found him in the midst of the crowd. The one who was looking. The one who wanted him. The one who refused to allow all of the stuff that was in the past to keep him from attaining what God wanted him to have in the future. And many times that's the way we approach one year to the next. Just the way it is. Is it? Or do we just choose that? Zacchaeus made a choice to climb a tree. 
He made a choice to look to the one that he heard so much about. He didn't spend any time with him. He didn't know this man. He'd only heard about him. But he wanted to see him. And in that brief encounter, he was changed. You see, in spite of his reputation, regardless of his life decisions up to this point, no matter the tangible that was in Zacchaeus' life, there was something in him that wanted more than just this casual look. Not just the crowd that came out of work. So let's all that is. Not just those who left their house and flooded in the street. He wanted to gaze. Free from distraction. And he found a new beginning that changed his life. I ask you this morning, do you want a new beginning? When you know Christ as your Savior or when you don't, do you want a new beginning this morning? Do you want a do-over? Do you want to start fresh today? So as we find ourselves in the new year, as we long and as we hope for something more than what we currently have that is in our possession, then you have to make a choice for a different view. You must reposition where you're standing. And some of you may need to climb like Zacchaeus did. The decision to get above the noise, to get above the distractions, to get above the opposition that stands as an opponent to your life, to get above the so-called friends that all they want you to do is do the same old thing, or even better yet, to get above yourself. The one who trips you up every single day. You have to make that decision because when you set your sights for Jesus, regardless of your surroundings, regardless of what happened in 2020, no matter what you are taking with you that is unfinished in the chapter that you're still writing in the 2021, when you begin to get a view of Jesus and understand who he is and what he wants to do in your life, you will become the person he's always wanted you to become. You will change. You will make statements like, I'll give everything I got. I'll do whatever needs to be done. Is that not what Zacchaeus said? You changed me, Jesus. I'm yours. I no longer belong to myself. The possessions that I own belong to you. So if you need me to give half of them or all of them, that's what I'll do. I'm just going to listen to you. That's it. And I'm going to respond to you. You need me to talk to that person or that person? That's what I'll do. It's just giving yourself to Him. You see, when you find yourself in that place, then you truly find a new beginning. You find a new journey, a new you, as we watch in the video with the opening of the service, to be the man. So that you can be the new song. That you can be the new mercy. So that you can be the new person who touches the life of another. You can be that voice. So how about it? Do you need a new beginning today? As we start 2021? Three days in. Do you need a new beginning? Whether you know Christ or don't know Christ, do you need a new beginning. Some of us need to climb today because we need a clear view of who Jesus is.